In this video tutorial, we are going to be creating ourselves a trading card using a free piece of software called PhotoP. The card that we're making today is for a famous Australian netballer called Steph Wood, who currently plays for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. As you can see on your screen right now, this is a copy of the finished product. So this is what you will be making today. And I will be splitting this tutorial up into two different videos as well. So you can have a break halfway through. Uh, before we get started on the first part of our tutorial today, there's two things that you do need to download off the internet. The first thing is a photo of Steph Wood, and the second is the Sunny Coast Lightning Team logo. So if you're in my class, I'll give you access to this image and this one here as well. If you're watching on YouTube, though, I'll just post a link in the description of the video where you can find these two images for free. Okay, so once they're both downloaded onto your computer, you can head across to photop.com. And this is the program we're going to be using today to create this trading card. Once you load up PhotoP, the first thing you need to do is click in the middle of your page on the New Project button. This will come up with a box just asking you what size or what dimensions you would like to use for your trading card. So up in the top left hand corner here, these are the things that we need to play with. So the name of our file is going to be trading card. The width of our trading card is going to be in millimeters. So make sure you select millimeters first. And I want you to choose, or type in 63 millimeters for the width and 88 millimeters for the height. The DPI, which stands for dots per inch, that's the resolution of our file, is going to be set to 300. Okay, the reason we use that is the industry standard for when we're printing items out and we want it at high quality, we use 300 dots per inch. The background color is going to be still white. Once you've got all these settings in, click on create and we're good to go. We've now got our empty white canvas ready for us to create our trading card on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the file menu and go to open and place. And we're going to place in an image of the Sunny Coast Lightning Team logo. Okay, now when you place, place your image in, sometimes it appears behind your background layer. Okay, and you won't be able to see it. It'll look something like this. So just make sure that your Lightning logo is on top of the background layer over here in your layers panel. That way you'll be able to see it clearly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the three colors in this um, lightning logo to create a nice gradient background. Now a gradient is when colors fade into one another. And let me show you what I mean by that. Over in your toolbox on the left hand side here, I need you to go down to this tool here called the gradient tool. It's where a bit of like a white fades into a black rectangle here. Just click on that. And up in your properties panel, you'll have a color box up here, which is probably a little bit different to my color box. Okay. I just want you to choose this one here that has three colors, blue, red, and yellow going through it. Now we're going to adjust those three colors. We don't want to choose blue, red, and yellow for our gradient. We want to choose yellow, purple, and dark blue. So what we do is we click on this color strip now, and that's going to bring up a box called the gradient editor which will allow us to change the three colors in our gradient. So we're going to change the blue first of all. All you need to do is double click on that little blue box and a color picker box will come up, allowing us to choose the first color to be in our gradient. I'm going to choose this gold color over here in the lightning bolt by simply clicking on it. And you'll see that lightning bolt color is now transferred over to our gradient. So click on OK in the color picker box and we can now come across to this middle box here that's red and double click on that. I'm going to choose purple for the next color. So come across to your lightning logo and just click on the color purple that you see and it will transfer that color over to our gradient here. Click OK and then double click on this last box over here and I want you to choose the dark blue. Click OK and your gradient is now ready to be used. So click on OK. Click on your background layer over here in your layers panel and I'm going to get you to simply draw from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. And what that's going to do is slap that gradient onto our page that we just created. And I think that looks really good. We've got the colors of the Sunny Coast Lightning Team in our background. It's going to go well with um, the photo and the logo we're using. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a photo of um, our player, Steph Wood, and put it into the card. So this time, just go to File and Open. And I want you to open that photo of Steph Wood. 
When you do that, it will open up in a new tab up here. So we've still got our trading card tab, but we've also now got a second tab open with Steph Wood. And as you can see, we've got too much going on in this image. What we're going to do is we're going to crop it down. So cut out the bits that we don't need. And we do that by using the crop tool over here. It's the fifth tool down in your toolbox. Once you've got the crop tool selected, all you need to do is draw a box around the section that you would like to keep. So I'm going to draw a box around Steph Wood and I'm going to cut out these two players here on the left and this player here on the right. We're just going to keep this chick in the green in the background and we're getting a reasonable amount of um, space still around Steph Wood. So that's what it should look like. If you've got a box similar size to mine, hit the tick and it will just crop it or cut out the bits you don't need. And no, sorry, what we need to do now is we need to copy and paste this over to our trading card. So I'm going to go up to select at the top and choose all. That's going to select this picture here of Steph Wood. I'm going to cut her out. And then I'm going to go over to the trading card. And I'm going to zoom out here by pressing Control minus a few times. And I'm going to edit paste. The reason I zoomed out is because I know that photo of Steph Wood is quite large and you're about to see that in a moment. So when we paste it in, she comes out huge. If you grab your move tool and make sure that your transform controls are turned on, you'll be able to resize her simply by grabbing a corner there, holding shift and dragging it down to size. So she fits nicely inside your trading card like so. Now I know this logo here is getting in the way so what I'm going to get you to do is just go over to your layers panel here where you've got the lightning logo hit that little eyeball and that will just hide it for a moment we'll come back and work with it later on layer one in your panel here is the Steph Wood photo so it might be a good idea to double click on the words layer one just rename it to Steph Wood so you know that that layer is her photo Okay, so feel free to just move it around a bit. If you need to make it a little bit bigger or smaller, do what you need to, but something like that looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to put some effects onto this photo to make it stand out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this layer over here in my layers panel called Steph Wood, and in this empty space next to the name, just double click your mouse, and a layer style box will appear. First thing I want to add to this photo is a border. And the word we use for borders in PhotoP is stroke. So when I mention the word stroke, I'm just talking about a border that goes around um, your selected image. Now the color of this border is going to be white. So where you've got fill type here in this little color box, just click on that color box and move your little cursor thingy up to the very top left hand corner and that will be white. So click on OK. And you can start to see a skinny white border appearing around the photo. Now once it's there, you can play with the size until you get a size that you're happy with. I think 5 pixels is all I need. And the position of this border, it needs to be on the inside, I believe. Let me have a look. Yeah, that's what I want. If you leave it on the outside, it's a bit hard to see, so I'll just make this a bit bigger. It comes up with rounded corners, which I don't like. But if we move that position to the inside, the corners are sharp again. So it looks heaps better. So just drag your lever back down if you made it big like me then. I'm actually thinking size 10 might be better than size 5. So let's change that size to size 10 and a position to the inside. Okay, that looks good. We've got a nice white border going around our photo. One other effect that I think is going to look really good with this is an outer glow. So down lower in the list, you've got outer glow. And you can see that it just makes this glow and it makes the image really pop out off the page. Have a look at my settings over here and make sure yours match mine. They should mostly be set in place. Just the opacity should be about 75% and the size 35 pixels. Okay, the rest of the stuff's pretty straightforward. Click OK when you're all good to go. And... If you just click off it there, you can see now you've got this pretty cool stroke and glow around your photo. And it stands out heaps more. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of text that goes across the top of the trading card here called Sharpshooters. Um, so let's grab our type tool here. And we're just going to simply click up the top of the page there somewhere. And in capital letters, make it all one word, 
sharp shooters. Now the font I'm using is Polar One. You don't have to use that. Just look for a big thick font though that's going to stand out like a big heading would on a page. Now on the size, basically it needs to fill a good chunk of that top strip of your page. So something like that. What size have I used? I've used size 62 and that'll look good. Um, the colour, if you hit this colour box here, I know mine's already on purple, but I do want a purple for this and I want you to pick a colour either from the background over here, but even better than that, I reckon go to her dress and click on one of the purpley colours down the bottom here and you should get this nice purple colour here. Click OK once you've got it. So we've got our text, that nice purple colour. Now it's a little bit hard to read that text, it's sort of blending in with the purple in the background there. So a way to make that text pop out is to add a stroke to it. Okay, that's another word for the border. So over here in your layers panel, just like we did before, double click in this empty space next to the word sharpshooters. Go to the stroke option. Okay, and this time the size is going to be a bit smaller than what it is. 10 pixels is way too big, but if you bring it down to like 2 or 3, you can start to see what's going on with that stroke. I'm going to probably set it to about 5 to start with, and I'm going to change the position from inside to outside. That looks pretty good. So 5 pixels for the size, and the position is on the outside. Okay, that looks pretty nice. So I'm going to click on OK. Just to give you a closer look, I'll zoom in on that so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that white stroke around the outside is the first thing we put on. I want to add another stroke to this now. I'm going to use that same purple as we've got on the inside of the shape, again on the outside. So to put a second stroke onto this, what we need to do is go over to our layer here called Sharpshooters and right click your mouse on it. And we're going to choose this option Convert to Smart Object. When we do that, it's going to allow us to add another stroke to it. Okay, so now you'll be able to double click in this empty space next to Sharpshooters. Go to your stroke option, and this time the fill color down here where the box is white, click on it, and go and click on one of these purple letters, and click on OK. Now the size of this stroke can be a little bit smaller than 5 pixels, I'm thinking 3 pixels will look pretty good. Positions on the outside still, click OK. And that's how our text is looking across the top of the page, I reckon that looks pretty good. One other thing we could probably add on to this, let's just see if it looks any good. I'm just going to go back and double click in this space to get my layer styles back up. Let's have a look at a drop shadow. If we add a little drop shadow behind the text, it looks like there's a shadow coming out behind it. I'm just going to change the angle to about 130-ish. Everything else looks pretty good, so I'm just going to click on OK. And there we go, we've got our heading looking pretty nice. Last thing I'm going to do now before I stop the first part of this tutorial is just rotate the text and the image a little bit to the left. So I'm going to go to my layers panel here and select Sharpshooters and Steph Wood by holding Control and clicking on both of those layers. So that selects both Sharpshooters and Steph Wood. And if you hover just off the corners of these, make sure you can see your transform controls, you'll be able to pick it up and just give it a bit of a rotate. Okay, now we don't want to chop any text off all the image off so just give it a bit of a rotate to the left so it's just a bit off center feel free to move it up and down a little bit until you're happy with it that doesn't look too bad so I'll hit the tick there now yeah that looks pretty nice might even move that text down just a little bit yeah, it's not too bad okay so I'll stop touching it now it's a little bit um, pedantic but that is what we're going to be doing for the first part of our tutorial today. Okay, the second part of the tutorial will come back and we're going to create this section down the bottom here. Alright, so I will catch you in the second part of the video.